لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to continue our reflections on Surah Al-Alaq. And we reached this part. I start from the beginning. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Iqra bism rabbika al-ladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insan min alaq. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم. so up to here we discuss alhamdulillah. then it continues like this. كلا إن الإنسان لا يطغى أن رآه استغنى إن إلى ربك الرجع so after explaining the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything and in particular created human beings. Alladhi khalaq, it's general, khalaq al-insan min alaq, it's particular. And when it comes to creation of human being, also we said men is from blood. Kalat means something that, uh, if you look at it, you don't think it can ever become something significant. And after saying that Allah is also <coughs> the teacher who has taught human beings how to use pen and what they didn't know. Now, we should naturally, logically expect that human beings should know that they totally rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They should be aware of their need and poverty. Their creation cannot be from themselves. No, nothing can create itself or give existence to itself. Plus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been so much generous with human beings. Allah is Rabb, but His Rububiyya when it comes to human beings has been Al-Akram. So it means the most honorable, generous uh, aspects of his rububiyya has happened with respect to human beings. And that is in the form of teaching them. So you naturally expect that human beings should be the most understanding people of their own need. Because Allah has created them and has given them also knowledge. So they should understand their own need. But the sad reality is It's not that there are people like Pharaoh or Namrud who become inordinate. There is such a general, <coughs> at least we can say, tendency among human beings that they go out of limits. They forget their limitations and they want to go beyond that. When there is, for example, a flood or you know too much rain and 
river overflows what river bed can contain is not enough and water overflows we say taqalma water has gone out of its limit tuyan and we have taqut also for a person who goes out of the limit uh, for example allah says about fir'aun innahu taqa but here it says inna al insana liyatqa it's not only one person or few people this is a kind of common problem when a man a human being becomes inordinate when it is born no when it is a little child <coughs> that needs care and support no when is hungry or ill no when you are strong rich healthy you have no problem then you think you don't need <laughs> anyone ان الانسان لا يتقى ان راه استغنى when looks at himself or herself and thinks that has no need then takes whatever he or she has for granted i think i don't need anything and then becomes taqi ان الى ربك الرجعى Truly, there is return to your Lord. Everyone and everything should go back to your Lord. So now, I want you to share your ideas about these three verses. Kalla inna al-insana layatqa. الرآه استغنى إن إلى ربك الرجعة. Why human beings can so easily forget their needs? Why human beings can forget God? Because forgetting needs and forgetting God come together. Why they are not grateful? by default and what is the relation between this and inna ila rabbika ruj'a they all go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why rab is repeated <coughs> you know so far we have had three times your lord اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق also اقرأ وربك الأكرم and here إن إلى ربك الرجعة why this ربك is repeated what we expect from human beings as intelligent beings as beings that are taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be aware and conscious of their needs. This is what we expect. But unfortunately, <laughs> what happens is that human beings, when for some time they have a stability and everything is going as they wish they think they are independent this is also related to the discussion we had on friday that we 
are more attentive to changes and to negative things. So if you see, for example, uh, there are ups and downs, there are problems, you notice. But if for some time everything just is going well, then you take it for granted. You think it has always been like this. You don't notice your need. Especially when you compare yourself to people or to the objects, beings which are lower than you. So Pharaoh, for example, looks at himself. He has power, he has money, he has army. And also looks at the people who have to listen to him and thinks that not only he has no need but he can also claim that other people need him and rely on him so it seems that Togyan is more than just forgetting your need Togyan is not only you forget your need and therefore forget your Lord you even think that you are the Lord for yourself and others. This is Tuyan. That you go totally to the extreme. A very dependent, needy, poor being not only forgets his need and his rap, he puts himself in the position of claiming Rububiya. <coughs> Pharaoh, instead of being very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to people, Ana Rabbukumul A'la. I am your highest Lord. Not only I am your Lord. I am your highest Lord. So, if God created you, still He is not your highest Lord. <laughs> but because, for example, I give you security and salary, <laughs> I am your highest Lord. And unfortunately, we also, from this side, have the same mentality. We, we are not that much respectful to the one who has created us and taught us than we are respectful to the people who are in a worthy sense help us or you know give us something yeah so, so when we talk for example to our boss or manager we are more humble than we are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so shaitan thought I am giving these people security I am giving an order in this country I am you know giving them rest so I am the highest Lord and perhaps he saw no one is you know that much objecting so it seems people don't mind so he went further and said Ma alamtu lakum min ilahin ghayri. Not only I am your highest Lord, indeed, I don't know of any Lord for you. Ma alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayr. Or Namrud. Sorry. Namrud, not only didn't obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only sinned, but Tuyan is, he went further. He claimed Rububiyya. And he entered into a debate with Ibrahim alayhi salam. When Ibrahim said, my Lord is the one who gives life and takes away life, Namrud didn't say, yes, our life is given by God and our life is taken away. He said, I also can do this. I give life and take away life. 
So ask someone who was supposed to be executed to be released and someone who was innocent to be killed. He said, look, I also give life and take away life. And unfortunately, those who were around, they were so uh, ignorant that Ibrahim is Salam so that there is no point in discussing this because they may not understand. They say, yes, he gave life and, you know, take away life. So Ibrahim alayhi salam went further and said, my Lord brings sun from the east, you bring it from the west. kafar. Then here, when he mentioned something which was not normal and regular for only uh, Namrud realized that he cannot do it because he, everything which is normal he, he thought he can do it because things were not changing so Tuqiyan is not just sinning or forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Tuqiyan is to deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deny your need, deny that you and others need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put yourself in the position of you, your Lord. Which is very unwise and very much wrong. So, what should we do to remember our need. What can save us from Tuqyan? Two things in my understanding. I mean two things are very important. Remember where did you come from? <clears throat> Were you always here? You are eternal? You are or you have an origin. Secondly, are you going to be here forever? Or you have to leave? When you are here just for a few days, how can you say, I am Lord? I am in charge. Perhaps this is why then Allah says, Inna ila rabbika Truly, to your Lord will be the return. So, by saying Rabbika, He reminds us of our origin and our sustainer. And by saying Arroja, He says, okay, these few days will pass. Then you die and you will be resurrected. Have you prepared your answer for that day? O oh, Pharaoh, what are you going to do when you die? Don't forget that a day would come that you have to leave and be present. You know, in Islam, you see how much emphasis is put on origin and destination. Many of our scholars, philosophers, have books, Al-Mabda'u Al-Ma'ad. Like Ibn Sina, Mullah Sadra, you know. Al-Mabda'u Al-Ma'ad. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'un. If someone believes in inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'un, doesn't become ta'ud. Would not do ta'ud. Yeah? Maybe this example can help. When a river is flowing, for example, from top of a mountain, water is coming, going to the sea. When you see that you are flowing, you would not claim independence. But if you forget and you think <coughs> everything is fixed, 
then you don't think you have origin, you don't think that you have to go somewhere else, then you think you have been here forever. If the river is not changing, it's not flowing, forgets its origin and forgets its destination. Yes? We are like a river because our existence is moment by moment given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not that Allah creates us once. Yeah, it's a misconception that people think Allah creates, then we are here for 40 years, 60 years, 70 years, whatever, and we die. He continuously is creating us. He is continuously sustaining us. If there is puppet in the hand of someone with some threads or ropes, if at any moment that person leaves this, it will drop. It's not just at the beginning. So, when we forget that we are indeed a current, we are like water flowing, we have mabda and muntaha. If we forget that, we think we don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remembrance of God and remembrance of death are very, very important. For example, in the ayah after Ayatul Nur, we have Fi buyutin adhanallahu an turfa'a wa yudhkara fiha smuh yusabbihu lahu fiha bil ghudubh wa al-asal rajalun la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillah wa iqam as-salah wa ita' al-zakah yakhafun yawman tataqallabu fiha al-qulub wa al-absar how they manage to remember Allah all the time, even when they are doing business and purchase and, you know, selling. Because they remember the day of judgment. Or, for example, Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْبَحْتُنْ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِرِ So, remembering Allah is not enough you have to remember also your death your <coughs> presence on the day of judgment otherwise you think okay God created you and finished now you can ca carry on so inna ila rabbika ruja'a don't think, okay, we have given you everything and now you are out of our control. No, you have to come back. And you have to be answerable for what you have done. Another thing which is a very important concept that uh, we want to reflect on is this concept of return, rojoo. What does it mean that we return? The Quran sometimes says that human beings return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sometimes says everything returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'un. Inna ila rabbika ruj'a, for example. Or, ila rabbika muntahaha. Or, ila allahi tasirul umur. This seems to be general. 
ilallahi tasirul umur. Oh, everything is becoming. Everything in a process of sayrura becoming. But this becoming would end by going back to him. Ilallahi tasirul umur. It's not that everything only is changing to their potentials or to their perfection. Everything is also moving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what does it mean that we return to Allah and everything is returning to Allah? What does it mean? For us to return to Allah, maybe it's easier to understand. We say, okay, we are going to be present after resurrection and that is our return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what does it mean that everything is returning to him? Ilayhil masir. Yeah? So what does it mean? Everything is returning to him. I ask Allah to help me to explain what I understand. This is my understanding since about eight years ago so f from eight years ago i came to this conclusion but maybe later inshallah i learn something better and i have not seen this uh, in this way uh, maybe it is said but i haven't seen it this way so uh, you take it with uh, caution <laughs> My humble understanding is this. When we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as human beings, and Quran says, Ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqih. Allah Metabatabai Rahmatullah Alai, when he mentions what is liqa here, he says liqa is raful hujub. When curtains are removed for us, it means we have returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are able to meet him. For all people, good or bad, mu'min, kafir, a time will come that hujub will be removed. In dunya, Allah has somehow hidden himself from us so that we go and find him. Or na'uzu billah, we may deny him. Yeah, so he has created a situation in dunya that those who want, they can find him. Those who don't want, they may deny him. Okay? But this hijab which is in dunya is not necessary to remain. Even in dunya, someone may be able to remove the hijab. لو كشف الغطاء مزدت يقينا. If the veil is removed, my certainty would not increase. Why? Because it's going to be removed for people. For me, it's already removed. Okay. So if someone in dunya meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then for him, day of judgment would not be a new thing. And if in dunya you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it shows you have made great success. But in akhirah to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not necessarily a sign of success because everyone is going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
In dunya to find Allah's presence clear is achievement. If you can say in dunya, ma ra'aytu shay'an illa wa qad ra'aytu Allah qablahu wa ba'dahu wa ma'ah, this is achievement. Otherwise, if you wait on the day of judgment, everyone would be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمُ Everyone would understand لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَحَارِ Okay? So, لِقَاءُ الله for us is a condition in which our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reach its peak in the sense of having no hijab between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? But because this happens by force, it's not a sign of achievement necessarily. For some people, maybe this would be very pleasant experience, the best thing they have ever experienced. For some people, it would be the most difficult thing they have experienced. <coughs> some are very happy and joyful and they keep looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some are very sad and their face is dusted. Or وجوهن يومئذن مسفرة ضاحكة مسفرة. So there are two types of conditions. Like for example, if in dunya you enjoyed darkness and kept away from light, and your eyes are now used to darkness, when they bring you under sun, you just have to bend and close your eyes, it's very difficult for you. But if in dunya, you were always going from light to more light, from light to more light, then that would be very pleasant for you to have the source of the light. Okay? So, roju for human beings is to have an encounter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without hijab and see clearly who he is and what you are. Who he is and what you are. Because when that light shines on you, you see yourself <laughs> with 100% clarity. You know, it can even uh, scan the most secret aspects of your being. On the Day of Judgment, you would see your Sir. Nothing is hidden. Okay? So, this is for us. And then after that, would be either hell or heaven or araf but what is return the, up to this part i think you can find it in some sources maybe not exactly like i said but it's possible you find but this part is what <coughs> came to my mind about eight years ago what is other beings return to God. For example, angels are not changeable according to most of our contemporary scholars. They say angels are mujarrad. They don't have change. So, when we say they return to God, what does it mean? Something which is not changing. You know, I'm trying to form argument, you know, put things together so that you offer a theory that can explain this. When something is not changing, what does it mean that they return to God? 
or when it comes to worldly things if they are going to stop being there this is not return if they are going to become something else again it's not return if I say a flower by returning to God becomes a, uh, another thing this is not return of flower so what does it mean they return my understanding in this Allah and I am not saying 100% but this is so far the best I have understood especially remember the issue of the angels that they are not changing in my understanding they return to God means that they would no longer have two aspects right now we can look at them as they depend on God or we can look at them independently you know when we for example meet each other or see the objects we compare these objects with each other but we may not be able to see the reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why they can deceive us indeed they don't deceive us but this is our own deception yeah there may be people who see everything but they don't see God so these are signs of God but people may not see their connection with God this in my understanding this is a distance that they have from God in dunya that someone can see them and don't see God they have become like a hijab at the same time that they are signed but they have the potential of becoming hijab and draw your attention to themselves instead of guiding you towards God on the day of judgment this stops on the day of judgment you cannot see a flower as an independent object when you see flower you see connection with God when you drink water you see connection with God so nothing would be epistemologically independent from God and this also shows that this is mostly a matter of their return to God for us so when we return to God they return to God because we have evolved in our understanding but for God himself or for angels there is no separation that they need to return if angels look at them right now they see the same thing or those who are RF, even right now they see the same thing. But when we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our understanding increases, then we would see them in a different way. So this is the meaning of everything returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything then would be in its best way of presenting itself for us the best way of us having encounter with them there is a hadith attributed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he says Allahumma arna al-ashya kama hiya O 
Allah, please show us things as they are. One interpretation is this, that enable us to see them as they stand for you, as you understand them. Because unfortunately, when we look at them, we may not understand them as they are. We understand them as we, with our limits, look at them. So, you see, a creature of Allah, which is supposed to be Vajhullah, but unfortunately, you don't see God. Even you may forget God. But if you can see them as they really are, as they are present before God, then there is no way to see them and not see God. And perhaps this is also the meaning of malakut for everything. Ibrahim salam said, Arani malakut as samawat wal earth. What is malakut of samawat wal earth? Means this world, this earth, skies, they have another aspect, they have another dimension, another face. And if you see that face, it's impossible not to see their connection with God. So, now let's go back to Ayah. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانِ لَيَدْقَى أَنْ رَآهُ اسْتَغْنَى إِنَّ إِلَى رَبِّكَ الرُّجْعَى This problem is going to be solved 100%. Because this problem happens when we see ourselves and other things without seeing God. When there is hijab, even looking at ourselves is with hijab. Not only looking at other things is with hijab, even looking at ourselves with hijab. When that hijab is removed and you go back to your Lord, then no one, even Pharaoh, would be able to deny God. But by reflecting on this and training ourselves, even in dunya we can little by little start reaching that point. Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Dua Arafah, he says, according to what is attributed, you know, says, Mataghibta. حتى تحتاج إلى دليل. Because when hijab is removed and you see things clearly, then you realize that actually there was no hijab. It was <laughs> your misorientation. You were not looking properly. So it was so obvious. When was the time that you were hidden that you needed something to guide us towards you? Imagine if there is light behind some glasses, different color. There is a red glass, blue glass, green glass, and light is behind them. The lamp is there. We see these glasses, <laughs> and then we say there is nothing else. These glasses are seen because of that light which is behind them. And you say, I only believe in these glasses and I don't believe in that light. 
That light is so clear that even when part of it is coming through these glasses, we see these glasses only because of percentage of that light coming through this to us. But now, if you go to the other side of the glass, not the side which is facing you, the side which is facing that source of light, can you deny that they depend on the source of light? You cannot deny. <laughs> so, Imam Hussein is on the other side of the glass. Says, "Mataqib tahta tahtaj la dalil. Ayakun al ghayr kamil al zuhur ma laysa lak." But we are in the, in this side of glass, so we use this glass as a way to prove that there must be something that is giving light to this. We go from ma'lul to illa. But if you have managed to go beyond ma'lul and look at the other side, from illa you should go to ma'lul, not from ma'lul. From cause you go to effect, not effect to the cause. Okay, I think I stop here. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our understanding, to remove all the veils which are caused by our forgetfulness, by our sinning, by our lack of attention, by our, our reduced remembrance of Allah. We ask Allah to remove all these veils and enable us to see the truth as it is and to find Him present as He is and to be inshallah able to share with people of the world this beauty of the radiation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes without hijab. If we can receive that and reflect that inshallah to people, then people would be inshallah better understanding their position. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.